This is the Creality CR10S Pro. It was sent to me by banggood.com to do a review, and I'm going to give you my honest opinion, both the good and the bad, on this special edition of Filament Friday. This special edition of Filament Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. This is a CR10 and this is a CR10S. This is my original Creality machine. When I got this two years ago, I was amazed how good it prints. It's been a fantastic machine running 24-7 in my print farm. I love it. The CR10S is like $100 more and added a few features. It added 256K memory to the box. This is 128. It added a filament runout sensor, which frankly, I don't think is that necessary. So I just put a piece of filament in, threw it to the side. That thing never stayed on anyway. And the other thing, it had dual threaded rods. This has a single threaded rod, so some people thought that would make it better. But I actually, I think it made it worse because the one driver drives both motors and splits the current and never seemed to maintain bed level. So what I did was took the extra one off, the motor and the threaded rod, and now this thing stays very level, prints really nice. So when people ask, should I buy a CR-10S or a CR-10, I always say, save the $100, just buy a CR-10. But now we have the CR-10S Pro, the latest evolution of the CR-10. I return the CR-10 back to its rightful place on the bench, and let's take a closer look at the CR-10S Pro. So what are the major differences between the CR-10 and the CR-10S Pro? Well, first of all, it's $200 more. $200 more than the CR10. But what do you get for that $200? Quite a bit. You get better electronics built into the base. You get auto level on the hot end. You got Capricorn tubing for higher temperature. You've got dual threaded rods driven by trinamic drivers. You've got dual gears on the extruder with less gaps. So you should be able to print flexible filaments, although I'll explain more about that in a minute. And you do have the filament runout sensor, just like the CR-10S, although it's much beefier and built into the bracket on the side here. So let's look a little closer at the electronics in this guy. You've got 256K memory on the motherboard, which is more than the CR-10, and you've also got trinamic drivers, which makes driving the stepper motors much quieter and much smoother. You've also got a touchscreen control versus a graphics control with a control knob, and it works really well. You've got a Meanwell power supply, 24 volt, just like the Ender 3, so it heats up the bed a lot quicker and also the hot end a lot quicker. In addition to that, you've got easier wiring. There's one ribbon cable that comes up to the side and connects up here by the extruder assembly. And just below the filament sensor is a circuit board where it breaks all the wires out already connected. So one connection of that ribbon cable and you're just about done. It's basically four screws to mount the gantry, two connectors for the stepper motor, and then this ribbon cable and you're ready to go. The bed assembly is a lot different on this versus the CR-10. It's got dual aluminum extrusion that are spread out and eight wheels to guide it. So it's much more stable and it's got an aluminum frame and then an aluminum plate clipped on top of it with build tack not glass. CR-10 had a glass bed. This has aluminum. And then it's got insulation underneath to keep the heat in and heat up quicker. But I like a glass bed and so I tried it on this machine and the auto level sensor just didn't like it. It kept jamming the nozzle into the glass. I even tried a mirror thinking that might help and that didn't improve anything. So that could be why this ships with an aluminum plate instead of glass. Once I got it set up and the auto level working, which took a while, I'll explain in a minute, I was able to print two separate cats the CR-10 cat, the same one I printed on that machine when I first got it, and it came out really, really nice. So it did a good job on these. Then I printed really big. I printed this orange uh, vase in vase mode, so it's a single wall all the way around using my Filament Friday filament, and it came out really smooth at a 0.28 layer height. So I'm really impressed with how solid this thing is. Printed really, really nice. But getting to this point, well, now that was a headache. To start off, I printed the only sample file that was included on the SD card, and that was the dog print. And this is the same dog print that's included with the Ender 3. In fact, it's the exact same G-code file because it printed right there where it would be centered on the size of an Ender 3. So they didn't even slice one specifically for this machine. It should have the cat. This was the file that was with CR10. It didn't have it. But I printed this, and it's to me it's not the best test print. It's got supports and everything else, but it was printing fine. And then it broke off the bed and I ended up with a spaghetti mess. And when I looked at the base of it, it clearly was not properly adjusted. The auto level sensor needed some tweaking. So I thought, okay, let's go back to the manual and we'll adjust it. 
there's two different bed leveling adjustments, level one and level two. So I tried level one, which is basically it moves to the corner and you manually adjust the knobs. And it was so far off. I said, this can't be right. I'm not going to do that. So I went to level two. And level two talks about adjusting a little screw with the screwdriver they include to adjust the sensor either up or down. What I didn't realize is when they were saying move it up or down, they're referring to the sensor and not the nozzle. So maybe it's my misinterpretation, but I was adjusting the screw to adjust the nozzle up or down, which is the exact opposite of the sensor. You want the sensor to go down to lift the nozzle, and you want the sensor to go up to lower the nozzle. So I totally screwed up my machine. So at that point, I threw their instructions aside. The Z offset wasn't doing anything for me. So I printed the cat, just the first layer. I checked it, and I tweaked the screw, peeled the cat off, printed again. I did that for about 45 minutes to an hour and finally got this thing to level consistently. To make sure that I had the auto level working across the whole bed, I printed five CHEP cubes, one at each corner and one in the middle. And it printed out beautifully. The only problem I had is one CHEP cube had a corner, bottom corner warped just slightly. And fair warning, don't watch Creality's video on how to auto-level this thing. Because they go through all the steps to auto-level it, but then the first layer goes down, and they tell you to tweak the knob and rub your finger on it to make sure that it's sticking. That's the same method I use to level the manual bed on the Ender 3. It's like they're watching my video, but if you do that, you're screwing up your auto level because the next time it prints, the sensor will then adjust to that bed, and you'll still be off. You have to adjust the sensor not the bed. The next thing I want to do is print these rubber feet. They're very, very soft and I print them all day long on my Ender 3 with that Easy R extruder which I showed in a previous video. So I wanted to try out the same flexible material on here. It's got the dual gears and real tight tolerances. So I tried to print a rubber foot with it and it got to this layer and then the filament escaped out of the gears. It popped out and so I tried it again and it did it again. So as far as I'm concerned, this extruder is an improvement but it still won't print the real flexible stuff. It probably semi-flex, no problem, but the real flexible stuff, like rubbery stuff like this, can't handle it. I took the fan cover off and here's the capacitive auto level sensor and the hot end. The hot end has the PTFE tube going all the way down to the nozzle and it's not the same nozzle as a standard CR10. It's a new style, but it's got the same issue that if you don't get that PTFE tube all the way down, you get a blockage just like I did on the machine here. For the extra $200, you're definitely getting a better machine than the CR10. You get a lot better electronics. Those trinamic drivers make these steppers really quiet and really smooth. And this is a fantastic PLA printing machine. To me, they should have put an E3D V6 hot end on it, though. This PTFE tube still going down to the nozzle. That limits your temperature range. An E3D V6 with the heat break would have been much, much better. And now at $600, you're in competition with like this guy which is the Prusa MK2S. This guy has an actual E3D V6. It's got a direct drive so it'll do that flexible material and it's got a auto level that calibrates itself. No screwing around it just does it. Now that's definitely a smaller printer than this but it's very very reliable and prints beautifully. So this is what you're competing with now once you're in this price range. So the advantage of the Creality machines where they were like sub $400, the CR10, the CR10 Mini, and the Ender 3, and they're fantastic printers for that price. But once you start getting up into the six, dollars $700 range, you better have some really good parts because the competition gets a lot tougher. So that's my first experience with the CR10S Pro. For the extra $200, bucks, you are definitely getting a lot more machine than the CR10. Is it worth the $200? Bucks? Well, that's really your call. Personally, that is a great deal. And with the extra 200 bucks, you can buy maybe a better slicer, you can buy some filament, you can buy a filament Friday toolkit, and still be under 600 bucks. But it's really what you want and what you need. So it's not a bad machine, but it's starting to get to that ceiling where it's now it's competing with other printers. It's a tough call. So I'll leave it up to you. I will put links in the description below. If you are going to buy one, I appreciate if you use those affiliate links. It really helps out the channel. And that's it for this special edition of Filament Friday.